Intermembranous ossification takes place in the fibrous connective tissue shown here by the blue lines. Mesenchymal cells, the orange blobs, scattered throughout the connective tissue are the beginning process of dermal ossification, another name for intramembranous ossification. At the very beginning of this process, mesenchymal cells migrate and aggregate in specific areas, where bone is soon to be formed after a series of steps. Once the mesenchymal cells have come together, they soon begin to replicate themselves. The brown line within each cell shows the division of the cell, now looking like this. After ample replications, the mesenchymal cells individualize into osteoblasts. Notice the color change from orange to purple. Osteoblasts are bone-creating cells that remove calcium from the blood and deposit it into the bone matrix. Osteoblasts then release an uncalcified bone matrix known as the osteoid. This bone matrix stores important growth factors such as insulin and bone proteins for the maturation of bone tissue. Through the addition of calcium salts and an enzyme catalyst, alkaline phosphatase, the bone matrix becomes calcified. Calcium salts form a solid rigid matrix, as the alkaline phosphatase is essential for the mineralization of bone deposition. When a calcified bone matrix surrounds an osteoblast, it then turns into a bone cell, known as an osteocyte. As shown in the picture, the osteocyte is surrounded. This enclosing structure is a lacunae where the bone cell resides. These previous steps make up one process called ossification, bone tissue formation. The ossification takes place in the ossification center where mesenchymal cells first began to aggregate. In the continuation of intramembranous ossification, linear extensions from the ossification center form, called spicules. The spicules will continue to grow and touch each other, fusing together, making a larger spicule. As you can see, the spicules form and grow around blood vessels. This is because mature bone is highly vascularized. Through the multiplication of ossification centers, the first initial bone formed in intramembranous ossification is spongy bone. During a process called bone remodeling, osteocytes on the outer edge of the spongy bone form osteons, tightly packed bundles which help in the transformation of spongy bone to compact bone. The compact bone is formed on the outside edges of the spongy bone. As shown from the labels, the sandwich of compact bone, spongy bone, then compact bone again is what forms the flat bones of the skull. Spongy bone can be removed through another process of bone remodeling and replaced with the medullary cavity. The outermost layer of connective tissue is known as the periosteum, completing the final structure of bone. Within the periosteum, more osteoblasts can be produced, allowing for widening of the bone, allowing us to be the size we are. As a recap, intramembranous ossification occurs through three different steps in order to form the flat bones of the skull, the mandible, and clavicles. First, the mesenchymal cells aggregate, forming an ossification center. Secondly, spicules connect around blood vessels. And lastly, spongy bone develops and can be remodeled.